tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview with the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled is author Marion Hall and chef Sibel Asfa. Native Californian Marion Hall has spent the last 30 years in Malibu. She's been active in the California fashion scene as a model, designer, teacher, and costume curator. Marion, let's start with school. Where did you go to school? I went to Boulder, Colorado, University of Colorado. Were you going to be a model at that time? What were you going to do? <laughs> no, I came home from a summer vacation and I, uh, I got a, uh, someone asked me to do a fashion show around the pool at the Huntington Hotel for uh, magnets, eye magnets. So that kind of got me into the fashion. Just, just uh, nothing you had planned. No, you weren't a fashion aficionado. No, at that time? no. Because you've become such a knowledgeable person in vintage and and uh, uh, California <laughs> fashion, fashion as well. So then you went to Bullock's Wilshire, which was the place to model, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Oh, it was fun. It was really fun. Those, it's, it was such a beautiful store, and it was such a great opportunity to be a model there. And that was the time when the tea room was so special. That's right. Did you right. used to do those oh, modeling oh, in the tea room? Oh, yes. Yes, because our mothers used to bring us to the tea room, and right. we would buy our uniforms sports, for Westlake yeah, School yeah. and Marlboro, <laughs> and all the schools would buy their uniforms right, there, right. and we'd have tea and wear our gloves. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> After you modeled a while, you started designing. Who were you designing for? Well, I had my own business, and um, I, uh, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I got married and I was expecting, and then after my baby came, I uh, started doing maternity clothes. Oh. And uh, my biggest uh, account was Lord and Taylor. I did their mail order uh, booklet for their maternity clothes. All from here? All, All from, from California? Here. You yeah. didn't have to go back east? That's right. So that was how I kind of got in that business, and then I was making a, a, some junior clothes for a while along with the maternity clothes and uh, was there a label name uh it was jenny oh it was jenny mm -hmm. which is my daughter oh i see and then you you were also teaching where did you teach uh, fashion institute of design and merchandising which is downtown, in downtown los angeles great and, school and then i became what were you teaching there uh i was i started out teaching manufacturing after being in the business for 18 years and uh, that was my forte and then I did a class on having um, different people in designers and people in the industry as speakers people that you knew that, that you could draw right, right and the fashion students love that oh, don't yeah. they? oh absolutely and it's necessary yeah oh absolutely now it's become a part of all the courses everywhere and I think fashion designers also see how important it is to go to the uh, oh, fashion oh, schools. Oh yes, absolutely. So you were also at FIDM, you became a curator for their gallery. That's right, for their, we, I, I started their fashion, um, their costume uh, collection there. Oh, you did? Do yeah. they have a permanent collection? Yes, they have a nice permanent collection. As a matter of fact, they have uh, Rudy Gernrich's a really great collection that he gave to the school. Oh, and Michael Novaris. Or Michael Novaris, yeah, right, right. right. So uh, they have a nice collection of uh, clothes. You, one of the shows you did, which uh, of course, I saw Claire McCardle's show in New York, but you did it years ago at here in Los Angeles. Right, right. And Claire McCardle was a. Was she a California designer? No, she was a New York oh, designer. She was a New York designer. And, and I got Rudy at that time to come and uh, commentate on it. I mean, he was the commentator for the show because he was such an admirer of Clara McArdle's. Did you ever do a show of his? 
Uh, no, I never did a show with uh, with his. And then what other show? Do they have an actual gallery space at FI? Now they yeah, have a beautiful gallery they do, space. They do, absolutely. And they have a nice uh, storage area that they have all their oh. clothes close in and uh, they have a good California collection of uh, California designers too. Accessories? Accessories and uh, they they have really built on it and it's quite nice. It's very nice. So all the time you were doing this you were in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> living in Malibu. <laughs> well, I was in Pas living in Pasadena, and then we moved to Malibu. And and you had a love affair, I guess, with that whole coastline. That's right. Which has taken you for many, many years. You became a docent at the museum, uh, the Malibu the Lagoon. Lagoon. Yeah, Museum. right. Is that still there? Oh, sure. It's at the Adamson House on, on the point there. Tell us about the Adamson House. The Adamson House was uh, designed by Clement Stiles, and it, they, it was built, uh, May Ringe, who was Frederick Ringe's wife and the widow of Frederick Ringe, uh, gave the property to, his, to her daughter. And she and her husband, Merritt, she was married to Merritt Adamson, and they built a house there in 1928, and they lived in town. I believe they lived in in the um, Wilshire area there, and that, but they didn't move out there until about 1936 and make it their permanent home. So the Ringes owned that rancho, right? Is that what they called it, the, Malibu the Rancho? rancho. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then she was the daughter of that original. She was the daughter of the original of the Ringe family. And they were also Hastings. We have a Hastings Ranch. Was Ringe also part of that Hastings no, family? No. Oh, he wasn't. Oh, I thought he was. No. Um, what, what was his first name? Frederick. Frederick Hastings Ranch. Ranch. Uh -huh. Oh, but it wasn't the ranch. It, no, it doesn't. Oh. No. Well, he had it, enough with the Malibu coastline. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How many miles does that take? Well, the Malibu coastline today is different than it was then, but it's 27 miles. And what does it what does it encounter? I'm, I'll hold it, this book up so it, that it we're... runs from um, today. It's actually today. It starts down at the Getty, down at uh, down uh, uh, at Coastline Drive, and goes to Ventura County line. But in that, but it was not that far down when he brought the property. What What are the areas all up and down? Are there different areas in oh, yeah. Malibu? Yeah, there's La, uh, La Costa Beach, and then there's uh, Carbon Beach, and then you get into main part of Malibu, and then it goes up Malibu Road and, and into, um, into uh, uh, Corral Beach. Oh, so each and, little... And then the Paradise Cove area, and, and then you get into the Point Zoom area. And so, so yeah. So there. Oh, I, you keep I'll, going to Ventura. To the Ventura County line. So after Point Doom, is there something There's else? There's uh, Zuma. Oh, Zuma. Zuma and Trancas. Zuma. That's where uh, Zuma J, one of your celebrities in the book, is. Well, Zuma J is not. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, actually, he's down the highway there by uh, in Malibu proper. Uh, we're just calling him Zuma J. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and who was he? He's a great guy, Jeff Wagner. And uh, he was a Marlboro man for years, and, and just the nicest guy. And now he's a partner of uh, Malibu Pier Partners, and he's the only visible partner. Uh, the other uh, people are the financial side, which are in San Francisco. Your book, Malibu, California's Most Famous Seaside Community. You don't call it a stretch, a strip a city, you call it a community. That was something we went over with my uh, editor that sh we were talking about a city, but actually Malibu's not a city. It, it is a city, it's incorporated, but actually it's more of a community and that uh, I think that's a better title for it. You know, Julia Shulman has done a book with yeah. photos. Right. Famous Julia Sh right. Shulman, whom right. I adore. Right. Dorothy uh, Stotzenberg, right. Yeah. History and Memoir. Right. Katie Benson, Real Estate. Right. Why would you write a book and how does it differ? from these other books. It seems like, how many books can you have on well, Malibu? Well, they all, and, and the funny thing is, they all have just come out in the last six months. Oh, they? 
Right. Oh. Since May. <laughs> And uh, no, the Jewish Shulman uh, book is is all mostly is all architecture, uh -huh. and uh, was oh, done by Abrams in New York. And um, then uh, Dorothy Stotzenberg is is uh, her memoirs of living in Malibu for fifty years. Mm -hmm. I don't know who her publisher. But why is yours so different from theirs? Well, because mine is uh, has a lot of photos. Mm. And covers I'm gonna show some and of that and, while you're and covers covers all the different areas of Malibu, and uh, and sort of tells the story of the different you know we we talk about PCH and driving up PCH and how how the different beaches and, and the different uh, locales have their 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 beauty. Here talking about that and and the then that's something that everyone likes to look at because they all can say, well, look, my house is right there. You start each... Um, the end of each chapter has a, an aerial. And it has a quote from Ringe, which that's, is that, that, interesting, isn't that's it? That's right. Oh, he had great, wonderful, wonderful quotes. Malibu always has been thought of as a um, Hollywood hideaway, I guess because the Malibu, the colony was named, what, Malibu? Malibu Movie Colony. <laughs> Malibu Movie Colony, right. Yeah. And right. they just shortened it. Well, that it's, it's... Where did you get these vintage pictures? Oh, I got them from various people, but um, uh, Ernie Marquez, I got the probably the earliest ones. These, I, th these particular horse ones I got from um, Egon Mertz's daughter, and Egon was a very well-known equestrian. I'm going to just turn while she's... And, and uh, so the vintage I got from various different people. And then your photographer for the contemporary Nick, things, like right, Nick? Nick Rodinoff, yes. He is the coach of the swim team and dive team at uh, Pepperdine. Which is also in Malibu. Right. Which moved from central, south central L.A. Right. to right. Malibu. Yes, and this is kind of a hobby with him. I mean, uh, uh, pho photographs, and he's been published. and and he does the art festival show. How did you choose the cover? Um, we just thought it was great because it was such, a, the colors sort of hit you in the eye. It does, it looks great. And it makes you think of the sunset, which is what is right. so beautiful right. there. This particular one, I think, was taken at uh, one time when they had a, um, I don't know whether it was a volcano uh, erupting oh. in some place in the, uh, Orient or someplace I don't know where, but it had something to do with. That's why the color is so uh, has those purple tones and reds in them. So perfect. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for coming today. Well, thank you. <laughs> and it was nice to see you again. <laughs> and thanks for watching this portion of the show. Don't go away because we have an Ethiopian chef named Sabel Aspa with some food from her restaurant. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Our guest is Chef Sibel Asfa, who was born and raised in Ethiopia. She's been in the United States for several years, but after attending Santa Monica College, she and her husband, Mulaheta Laku, did I say it right? Yes. Decided to open a restaurant in Culver City. Had you cooked in restaurants before? No, I am just working for a restaurant before. Where did you work before? For Factors Daily for um, Pico and Beverly Drive. So, so, but you had always cooked at home? I was cook all my life to cook. What about it in um, Ethiopia? I cook, I have a little shop, a yep. small business, small business shop. Yeah. Was it cooking That's too? That's not because it's different. Right? What did you do? Uh, for back home, then I have a little shop. For mm -hmm. I do work there and stay with my mom. Did, did you make clothes because your dress is beautiful? No, this is for culture, for Ethiopian culture clothes. You uh, can eat. Where do you buy something like this? And do you wear this when you're at your restaurant? No, that's different. This is for wear something when you go to the wedding on church. You can use this one. Not What's it made from? Made from Ethiopia, like 
Ethiopia. Made for Ethiopia. Out and of what kind of material? That's for cotton. That's cotton material. When you were in Ethiopia in um, Addis, Addis Ababa. It's so hard to say. Addis <laughs> Ababa. I guess yes. it's easy. It is easy. Um, were you helping your mom in the kitchen? Yeah. When she cook, always I watch her. And she teach me to cook how to cook. Because your husband said, um, Mulageta. 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 Your husband said that no two Ethiopian women cook alike. Why some. is that? I don't know, some, but I love to cook. Always after work, I cook. Every day, something different. What, what is the differences from household to household? Do you cook like your, your husband's mother or like your mother? My mother, his, his, his mother, the same thing, the same cook. They cook the, the same the way? The same way, yeah. And what does that in, encompass? What do you have to have? To, to cook? To produce for some spicy, different one kind of vegetarian, you can use some. That the thing's different. But is it all from that area? No. Tell me, you have to speak a little bit louder because I can't hear you. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> we can use cook for just you. You can use your own culture cook, right? Like you can use some different spicy for here. That's the way you use. And then. The name of your restaurant is uh, Fasaka? Fasika. Fasika. Yes. Which means? Fasika means for Easter. Like and why is that so special to speci Ethiopians? Okay, that's special for everybody the same to get together for every Easter. This is the, we call it Fasika. Fasika. And so all family. Do you cook special things? We cook special things. Usually you use for chicken stew and lamb. That's the, that's the big one. The just like you guys, Thanksgiving turkey. Oh, that's what just it is like, like that. for Thanksgiving that's turkey? Yeah. So how, is this the, the one of them? This is the one of you use for all the the chicken stew and the lamb. That's the major one. Okay, so it's a, a, do you serve each person a big platter or you no, serve you platters of chicken platter and then and platters of? The big platter you can use and all family to get together. You just use one big platter, you don't put a platter of salad or a platter of corn. What else is there, For lentils? Are we talking about here or? Uh, here at your restaurant. restaurant. Okay, this is, I, I serve like, this is for two people. When you came with a friend, you can order Fasica special. Two people, you can get this one. So it's one plate like this? One plate, yeah, just and two then, persons. And then the one special thing about Ethiopian cuisine is you don't use utensils. What do you use? You mean tenses means like the to cut to knife cook. and fork. No, you can use your hand. You can grab for the bread. Here's the bread down this here. This is a yeah. bread. Can I show you how to? Yeah. You can get the bread like this, and you just grab it like this, and you can eat. So you just take pieces. And do you, you make the bread? I make a bread. This is a bread. This is with flowers came straight back home. I'm gonna hold it up Nothing so she can see it. it. What is yeah. that? That's flour. Name is Tef. So Tef. The name is Tef. We call it Tef. It has little holes in it. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of Why does it have little holes I in it? I made it just like um, the pancake. Uh -huh. You can use pancake things. Uh -huh. That's the one I use. Uh, and so this is like your fork or your spoon? Just like that, but we didn't use a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, um, when you decided to have, to open a, a restaurant here, mm -hmm. there's a whole ex section of Fairfax Avenue that has a lot of Ethiopians, but also different ethnic restaurants there. Yes. You decided obviously not to go there. Yeah, but <coughs> I'm looking for, I'm living close to the Culver City for a long time. Just uh, I want to open something different for the Culver City place, you know. We don't have any Ethiopian restaurant in that area. And That's so, <coughs> it's near Sony Studios. Exactly. How do you get those people to come into your restaurant to try something different like this? I just went to uh, Sony picture for I give for the flyer, so everybody's come. Oh, you did? Oh, so I you have had to do your own marketing? My own marketing, yeah. And I have a lot of customers for Sony pictures. That's great. Yeah. What um, would you say is typical? Is it typical vegetarian or is it typical meat? I have to mix it. When you eat at yeah, home, yeah. I mean, when you eat in your country, yeah, we can. You can eat whatever you want. You can eat vegetarian. You can eat for me. 
You eat fish? I eat fish, and I cook fish too. What yeah. are the ingredients? What kind of spices do you use? Let's, okay. let's look at this right here. Okay. This one I use for cayenne pepper, the red pepper. This came to straight back home. Okay, not in here. Strip. This is the so one. So this yeah. is cayenne pepper Ka yeah. from Ethiopia, Ethiopia, not from here? No. Okay. This is uh, this pepper, the just different cayenne pepper. This came to straight back home for uh -huh. Ethiopia. That's when I use different kind of. And what about the corn? That's yellow pea. Oh, this is That's pea. That's pea. That's the pea. And then the green? The colon green. This is potato carrot and garlic and ginger, the red one. This one is, what is it? Potato carrot. Potato and carrot. carrot and garlic. This, this one is cabbage. Cabbage mm -hmm. and carrot? Carrot and potato. Do you use a lot of carrots? I use a lot of carrot. Uh, and, and the salad is, is a regular is a, salad, right? Salad is regular. I use my salad, regular salad. Okay, and then? This is for lentil. No spicy. This is lentil, just a little spicy. Two, two lentils. Two different kind of lentils. Are, are lent, do lentils come red? And yeah, not, not spicy. But, but do you have to color it to make it spicy? I can make or it color. are they all brown to begin yeah. with? Yeah, yeah, I'm making color. I see you make color. <laughs> yeah. And this so what, tell me what you call the food. It's injera? Injera. I mean the bread? Injera. That's pure flour for Ethiopia. You have to get a certain kind of flour. What kind of grain is it? That's for teff. We call it teff. Teff grain, but from what? From corn kernel. Corn kernel. It came to Baco. We don't have in here. So you have to get all of this from Ethiopia? Ethiopia. And I just mix it two days and just, just make bread. Does it, does it get uh, fermented? No fermented. I didn't put anything, no yeast, nothing. Just water. Oh. I, I can keep it two days in the third day so I can make Okay, it. let's say you're doing a big party. Do you do any catering? I do a lot of catering. Okay, let's say you're going to do a birthday party. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you would start it and what you would do. But you have to speak up so I can <laughs> hear you. Don't be afraid. And it's up to you whenever, how many people you can order. Okay, right? let's say we're going to have 20 people. 20 people. I give you a choice which one you want. You can a vegetarian dish. You want a beef. We're going to mix it. I can put each pupil. But tell me what you're going to put on, what you're going to send to me. I can send you for the big part. I put everything, each food. Yes, I can but tell me what kind of beef I'm going to get. Whatever you like beef. I make beef like spicy beef, like tomato and onion, jalapeno. That's what I want to know. And I make for without any beef. And, and how do you make the beef? What kind of meat do you use? Any kind of meat, like skew beef. I have in here. Stew right beef? A skew. Oh, cube. 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 I make just like that. If you want it spicy, I can do spicy. If without spicy. And I make lamb. Oh, and then how do you make the lamb? What part of the lamb do you use? The leg? The leg and the shoulder. I and then you Yeah, and I, I cut it for less cube like this. Give me that recipe for the, the lamb. Do you cut it in cubes? Yeah, and I put it for garlic, onion, and ginger. How do you cook it? I put it for oil. And pour it. You saute it? That's it. You just saute, saute it in oil and then and you put, put the spices water, in. Spice, yeah. And I then put do you stew it? Does it have to sit and stew? Yeah, it's just a stew. I can make for, I st when you make stew, you put garlic and ginger and onion. So that's the main ingredients we're talking about yeah. in Ethiopian cooking. So we always have ginger, garlic, garlic and, and onion. onion. And a lot. I, we use a lot of onion. Do you? We just regular, regular brown onion or brown green, onion. green onions or red brown onions? Onion. Brown onion. Did you chop them? Chop them, yeah. Very chop. Okay. So you're bringing me the beef or the lamb and the then... Um, chicken. Chicken. How do you make the chicken? The chicken is, the chicken, like, we call it dorowat. That's chicken stew. I make chicken take me three days because it's spicy. Can you use three days? So what do you do with the chicken for three days? <laughs> What's because happening? the paper is hot uh -huh. when you use three days for... You use it. You stir it for three days? Three days. And after three days, it was good. So, so most of everything in your cooking is a stew. A stew, yeah. Is that because you eat it with injera. pieces of injera? Right. Oh, so it has to be so you so don't you can, yeah. cut you it? Can, no, no, you didn't cut it. You can use just grab for a piece of injera and you can use. You don't need fork. Do you have to heat the bread? Is the bread heated? It's up to you, yeah. I made it every day fresh. Do you use any butter? No, we don't use any butter. 
No butter. No butter. Cream? Do you use cream? No. no. You didn't use nothing. So you have this on a piece of bread. All right. And so would you use this bread to you eat? You can use it too. Yeah, you can use this too. <laughs> yeah. I see. And then what about desserts? Do we you have, have desserts? We have baklava. And oh, we you have, do? Uh, yeah, I have an appetizer for lentil. I use for lentil. I use lentil for lemon, mm -hmm. garlic, and uh, that's, that's it. Lemon. But then what, what lentils are hard, so how do you, you have to cook those for a long time? I just cook for 10 minutes, and I take and I put Yemen, Yemen, that's it. And that's it. Now tell me about the dessert, baklava, how is that made? Baklava actually made for, I just bought it for someone. You and buy it, it yeah. you can't make no, it, but do you make it in your country? My country, yeah, but I don't have to make it. So when you go back to uh, Addis Ababa, <laughs> when you to, do you go off and back? I was there for 99. How does it seem to you when you go back? It's the same to you, you know, you miss you back home. It's something different. I went there after 10 years. So. And your family, did you have family my mom, there? My mom, she's there. And do they like the way you're cooking here? She likes it. She's excited. She's happy. Has she been here to visit you? Uh, four years ago, she was here. Oh, but did I she didn't. help you in the kitchen? No, she wasn't here. I just opened to 14 months. Oh, you? Oh, and, uh, so you I didn't just, have a yeah. kitchen then. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. And thank you for being with yeah, us today. Thank you, you guys. Enjoy for the food. Thank you. <laughs> and keep riding to 777 South Figueroa. 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017, the Joan Quinn Profiles. See you next time. That's great. You can eat, you guys. I have a